Welcome to my video of Tacoma. Wait a second. Not that Tacoma. This Tacoma. Hello, my name is Greg. I like to travel the world. But this video is about my hometown, Tacoma. I'm going to take you on a tour of what I consider the highlights. I'll talk a little bit about the history, and I'll show you some pretty cool sights along the way. Of course, the amazing Mount Rainier, what I consider the most beautiful mountain in the world, as you can see here, looms over the city, showing off its massive size and radiating beauty anytime the weather cooperates. All of the music in this video will be played by me, clicking play on a computer. I'm going to cover many sites, including what I consider the biggest landmarks of the city. The Narrows Bridge. The Tacoma Dome. Stadium High School. Point Defiance Park. And Union Station. Hmm, where should we start? I know. Let's start at the beginning of how Tacoma became a city, as I take you down 30th Street Hill. Tacoma's nickname is the City of Destiny. I'll explain how it got that moniker as we head by the Job Carr Cabin, a replica of the first cabin built by the man who founded Tacoma. Job Carr! A man who joined the Union Army to fight the Civil War at age 47 because of his strongly held anti-slavery beliefs. After three years of fighting and several major injuries, he went to Iowa. Later he learned that the Northern Pacific Railroad was going to build its western terminus in the Pacific Northwest and was looking for the best site. The site they chose was to become the New York of the West, the City of Destiny. Up until the railroad was built it was required to travel a very rough journey in a covered wagon. After the railroad was built, people from the eastern part of America would certainly bring money and services on the trains. So he sold his property in Iowa to move to the wilderness to claim land and help build it up before it became valuable. He arrived in what would become Tacoma's Commencement Bay on Christmas Day 1864, and indeed the Northern Pacific Railroad did choose Tacoma to be its western terminus. We are now heading on to Ruston Way one of the most beautiful views in Tacoma. You can certainly understand why Job Carr and the railroad saw this spot with Mount Rainier towering over Puget Sound, which you will see shortly, and felt this was the perfect place to begin building what was to become the greatest city of the West. Ruston Way was named after William Rust, an early Tacoma citizen who was president of the smelter that used to be located along this part of Puget Sound for many years. Now Ruston Way is a popular spot to go for a walk, jog, or ride a bike. There are numerous upscale restaurants along the waterway, as well as relaxing shopping, a spray ground with water jets for kids to play in in the summertime, a movie theater, and apartments. But the best part is the incredible view of Mount Rainier, the same view that made the Northern Pacific Railroad bring its headquarters here and made Job Carr shout Eureka when he first saw it.
And for me, the most enjoyable event that Tacoma puts on every year is definitely the Freedom Fair, a celebration of America's independence. Rustin Way's two mile long walkway is packed with people to watch the air show, three stages of live bands, a pole vaulting competition, many, many delicious food and souvenir booths, activities for the whole family, and of course a spectacular fireworks show at the end of the night. The Travel Channel named it one of the 10 best 4th of July celebrations in the country. Just up the hill and onto Pearl Street is our next destination, Point Defiance Park. But first, I recommend having a stop at the Antique Sandwich Company. It's been a staple of this neighborhood and a great place to get a sandwich or a piece of homemade pie for many decades. You can eat it inside or in their little garden of Eaton in the back. Now just a short walk down the street to Point Defiance Park. Point Defiance certainly has to be one of the coolest city parks anywhere. A whopping 760 acres, it occupies the entire tip of Tacoma, sticking out into Puget Sound. Point Defiance was established as a park in 1888 under the orders of President Grover Cleveland. Here you can see Rustin Way just down the way. And here is the entrance to the park. Off to the left brings you to the main part of the park, while off to the right will bring you to the ferry that goes back and forth to Vashon Island. It also leads to the marina, where you can rent a boat or a kayak if you like, or perhaps eat at Anthony's Seafood Restaurant. Here comes the ferry now. This big open field is popular to go sledding on when it snows, and in the summertime it's the location of a big event called the Taste of Tacoma, which brings in large crowds to try many different kinds of food from all over, all gathered together at one place. Point Defiance has numerous beautiful gardens, including a rose garden and a rhododendron garden. Unfortunately, they are not in bloom yet here, but it does look pretty spectacular when they are.
This is the Pagoda. It served as the Point Defiance streetcar station for the now defunct Tacoma streetcars until 1938. It now holds events. Right next door to the Pagoda are the Japanese gardens. I've enjoyed seeing many animals at the Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium. From tigers to sharks, beluga whales to polar bears, leopards to penguins, and if you can make it during Christmas time, Zoo Lights is pretty darn cool. Owen Beach is particularly popular during the summertime. You can have a barbecue or get some food at the snack stand. One of the more unique features of the park is Fort Nisqually, an actual fur trading outpost of the Hudson's Bay Company that was established in 1833. It now lives on as a living history museum, with workers dressed in period attire and demonstrating how people live from making food to a blacksmith shop. There are tons of trails, both paved and unpaved, throughout the park. The five mile drive is a particularly popular place to go for a jog or a leisurely bicycle ride. Along the five mile drive is the Mountaineer Tree, 218 feet tall and over 450 years old. Perhaps the most exciting thing on the five mile drive is a stop at the viewpoints along the way, such as this one called Dalco Passage Viewpoint. So spectacular the view can rival a national park. And this one you get a great view of the Narrows Bridges. The original Narrows Bridge built at this spot was nicknamed Galloping Gertie for the way it would dance in the high winds along the Narrows. It collapsed in 1940 and was surprisingly captured on film collapsing. You can find that famous video on the internet now. Galloping Gertie is the largest man-made wreckage ever lost to sea, more than five and a half times bigger than the Titanic. After doing testing at the wind tunnel at the University of Washington, a much stronger Narrows Bridge was completed in 1950 after being delayed due to America's involvement in World War II. That bridge is the more narrow green bridge on the right here. A second Narrows Bridge 
was added in 2007 to help with the growing population, they lead to the small picturesque town of Gig Harbor and farther to Olympic National Park. Certainly, Point Defiance has amazing views of the Narrows Bridge, but so does Titlow Park and Titlow Beach. Whether you want to cool down on the water at the park, or relax on the beach, play baseball, or go fishing, Titlow is a great place to take away your stress. Tacoma Community College has been an institute of higher learning since 1965. Like most of Tacoma, Mount Rainier towers over the campus. This view is just across the street from TCC in the James Center Shopping Center. Chambers Bay is an extraordinary public golf course. It even hosted the 2015 U.S. Open. And it has a beautiful walking trail that's very popular with the locals. 
I think you can see why. The University of Puget Sound, or UPS, is Tacoma's oldest college, founded in 1888. Running just on the edge of UPS is Union Street. I find Tacoma particularly beautiful in autumn. A walk or ride along this tree-lined street is a great place to take in the fall foliage. Well, we've been out sightseeing for a while now, so we're going to need some food. Where should we eat when we're in Tacoma? I'm going to recommend some places that are unique, not just something you can get everywhere. Maybe a little historical, maybe a little quirky, but places with some personality and some flavor. Pun not intended. Earlier, I talked about the historical streetcars that used to run in Tacoma. One of the stops was the Pagoda at the Point Defiance Park. Well, those streetcars don't run anymore, but you can still see one of them at the old spaghetti factory. The next restaurant up is on the National Register of Historic Places, Engine House Number 9. Engine House Number 9 
was built in 1907 to protect against fires in the North End. It served as the battalion headquarters for many years. It was the last station in Tacoma to convert from horse-drawn to mechanized equipment. It was used as a fire station until 1965, and it was abandoned until 1971 when it was purchased and turned into a restaurant serving classic American fare. MSM Deli is a local favorite. Tacoma residents swear that they live up to their name. So what does MSM stand for anyway? Magical sandwich makers. I think the artwork on the back of their store is pretty cool, with a number of Tacoma landmarks, such as the Tacoma Dome, Union Station, Bob's Java Jive, St. Joseph's Hospital, the Narrows Bridge, Stadium High School, and of course Mount Rainier in the background, and many more. That's impressive, but I'm even more impressed with their Mike's Deluxe. Mmm, delicious. And now, talk about a local legend. The most famous Tacoma restaurant has got to be Frisco Freeze. The Tacoma landmark since 1950, still in the same building, still no inside seating, still no drive through speaker. You'll have a bit of a wait even if you go at midnight, but it's worth it and you might not have a better burger anywhere. They still use those same 1950s bags, and the building also has that 1950s nostalgia and appeal, and this place definitely has taste. Finally, there's the quirky Bob Java Jive, also a registered historic site, having been everything from a diner to a bar to a speakeasy. It was built in 1927 as the Coffee Pot Restaurant. The name was changed in 1955. Kurt Cobain and Nirvana used to play here frequently, and Keanu Reeves filmed part of a movie here called I Love You to Death in 1990. He liked it so much, he offered to buy it for $1 million and move it to Hawaii. The owners turned him down and said it belongs in Tacoma. This is the Rust Mansion, also known as the White House of the West. You may remember the name Rust from earlier in the video, William Rust, whom Rustin Way is named after. Tacoma has many beautiful large historic homes, many of them in the stadium district. Let's take a look and appreciate some of them.
this century-old mansion is the Warehouser Mansion from Warehouser Lumber fame. It is 15,600 square feet with 11 bedrooms and 8 bathrooms, perched above the Puget Sound with incredible views of the Olympic Mountains one way and Mount Rainier and the Cascade Mountains the other way. This is the house that Bing Crosby was born in, May 2nd, 1904. The house was built by his father. Bing is one of the greatest entertainers of all time. He's responsible for two of the ten best-selling songs of all time, including the number one selling song of all time, White Christmas. He had 40 number one records, which is one less than the Beatles and Elvis Presley combined. His records reached the charge 396 times, more than Frank Sinatra and Elvis Presley combined. He made over 70 feature films and was nominated for Best Actor three times and won the Best Actor Academy Award in 1944. He may be the highest selling recording artist of all time. Only him, Elvis Presley, The Beatles, and Michael Jackson have over a billion songs sold. Here we pass the gorgeous St. Patrick's Church and Tacoma's oldest church, St. Peter's. Tacoma has many grand churches and I'm going to take you by a few here. Now we're going to pass by First Presbyterian Church and head over to Wright Park and the Seymour Botanical Conservatory and its beautiful display of exotic plants and flowers.
Just across the street from the conservatory is the Carpelli's Manuscript Museum, the largest private collection of historical manuscripts in the entire world. Incredibly, the museum is always free. The rare, original manuscripts cover all parts of human history. Some of the items you can see in their rotating collection of exhibits include Catherine Lee Bates' America the Beautiful Poem, Einstein's first draft of the Theory of Relativity, Galileo's 1638 letter announcing two new sciences, the birth of mechanics as a science and the mathematical analysis. The original printing of the Ten Commandments from Gutenberg's Bible considered the most precious piece of printing in the world. A peace treaty of the War of 1812 and the surrender of the German Third Reich. Christopher Columbus's written letter announcing that he had discovered the Indies. Original symphonies from the greatest composers such as Beethoven. The American Declaration of Independence. Clay tablets from Egypt and Babylon and Persia and so many more. I'm just barely scratching the surface. An incredible museum everyone should see. Now, just down the way, let's head down to the historic Stadium High School. The history of Stadium High School is directly intertwined with the history of Tacoma. The Northern Pacific Railroad began construction here in 1891 on what was to be a grand hotel modeled in the style of a French chateau castle. This is where a who's who of the world were going to stay when they took the railroad to the end of the line. Unfortunately, fate didn't work out that way. The Depression of 1893 halted construction and ultimately bankrupt the Northern Pacific Railroad. The building sat abandoned until 1904, until the city of Tacoma was looking to build their first high school, so they purchased a property and opened Tacoma High School in 1906. After the second high school, Lincoln, opened in 1913, the name was changed to Stadium High School, in reference to its huge sports stadium known as the Stadium Bowl, which you will see in a moment. The Stadium Bowl was completed in 1910. When it was completed, few things could compare to it in the world. In fact, this is what President Theodore Roosevelt had to say when he visited in 1911. I have visited, I think, most of the cities of the world, and there is not one of them which has such a stadium as this, situated with such an outlook as this. And it seems to me that not only have you done something in building the stadium, which will have an extraordinary effect upon the lift of your own city, but you have done something also which must have a very marked effect upon all other cities in the Union. In addition to President Theodore Roosevelt, Presidents Woodrow Wilson and Warren G. Harding also spoke in the bowl. The seats used to go all the way around until a storm drain broke in 1980 and washed out part of the end of the bowl and the seats in the middle. Many parades, shows, and cultural events were held here. People would gather here for the fireworks show every 4th of July off the barge in the Puget Sound. There are reports of as many as 60,000 people in attendance in the early years. The first night college football game on the West Coast was played here. Even the great Babe Ruth played an exhibition baseball game here in 1924. Let's not forget about the popular movie 10 Things I Hate About You that was filmed at the school and of course the classic scene of Heath Ledger singing and dancing on the bowl stairs. Many sites have ranked Stadium the most beautiful high school in the world and I think it's pretty easy to see why with its amazing castle-like architecture, its sports stadium, and its location on a cliff perched over the water with Mount Rainier just over its shoulder. Add in its incredible history and it's pretty tough to talk.
Fireman's Park is most famous for two things. Its totem pole that was carved in 1903 and was the tallest in the world. and its spectacular views of Mount Rainier, seen through the Murray Morgan Bridge. As I talked about earlier, Tacoma is a railroad city. Its beginnings and how it became known as a city of destiny is because this is the spot that was chosen as the western terminus of the Northern Pacific Railroad. This was to be the great city of the west. So people began to flood in. The city began to boom. In those early years, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, top-notch, beautiful buildings with exquisite architecture began to pop up rapidly. This white building with the fancy round roof was the headquarters of the Northern Pacific Railroad. It was completed in 1888. This white building is the Old Elks Temple. In recent years, it has been restored by McMinimins and turned into a beautiful hotel with numerous restaurants and bars, including a hidden bar that you must find behind the walls. Next to it are the beautiful Spanish Steps, named after and modeled after the famous Spanish Steps in Rome, Italy. And of course, Old City Hall with its old world style brick facade and clock tower that has always reminded me of the Back to the Future movies. It was completed in 1893 and used by the city until 1957. It is now used for restaurants and retail space. So if Tacoma was a chosen city, and all of these great buildings were built here, then why is Seattle the biggest city? Just luck really. As I mentioned earlier, the depression of 1893 halted construction of the hotel that later became Stadium High School and bankrupt the Northern Pacific Railroad. A few years later, gold was discovered in Alaska and it started a craze called the Klondike Gold Rush. The ferries to Alaska left from Seattle and therefore many jumped off the Tacoma bandwagon and onto the Seattle bandwagon. But remember, Tacoma was a city of choice. Seattle was a city of luck. The Temple Theater the Rialto Theater, and of course the Pantages Theater are among the highlights in the theater district. But the biggest highlight is this triangular shaped yellow building called the Boswick Building. It was built as a hotel and retail space in 1889 by Tacoma's first practicing physician Henry Clay Boswick. The movie I Love You to Death was filmed here primarily, but what makes it so great is the significant role it's played in American history and culture. An event that took place here in 1893 has forever influenced the world. Let me explain. So the best part about the Bostwick building is you can see on this plaque here, commemorating it, it was in this spot that Russell G. O'Brien, who was a Civil War veteran, started the tradition of standing for the national anthem that now people and countries do everywhere around the world. And that great tradition was started right here at the Bostwick Building in Tacoma, Washington 
on October 18th, 1893. Pretty amazing. Another of Tacoma's great landmarks is this architectural masterpiece, Union Station. Designed in the style of Rome's Pantheon, it is exquisitely topped with a 90-foot high copper dome. Union Station was built during the golden age of rail travel by the same architects that built New York's Grand Central Station and completed two years before it. Unfortunately, the golden age of rail travel in America has long finished, with most people adopting the automobile as the preferred form of travel after World War II. But this National Historical Landmark was saved and turned into a courthouse in 1992. Just across the street from Union Station is the University of Washington Tacoma campus. Right beside Union Station is the Washington State History Museum, seen here. And directly behind it is the Glass Museum, that is the brainchild of the great glass artist Dale Chihuly, another pupil of Tacoma. And to get to the Glass Museum, you cross the magnificent Chihuly Bridge of Glass. The Port of Tacoma has this observation tower that allows the general public to watch the ships being loaded and unloaded.
The ports of Tacoma and Seattle together comprise the second largest load center in the nation. Tacoma's is actually larger than Seattle's. The top trading partners that go to the port of Tacoma are China, Japan, Alaska, and South Korea. Most of the goods are put on trains and trucks and shipped across the nation. The Tacoma Dome opened in April of 1983. It is the world's largest wood dome by volume. Many of the most famous musicians in the world have played there. It's in the top 20 in the world in concert sales, and it has housed the ceremonies of many of Tacoma's graduating high school classes. This is the Brown and Haley factory, where they make all of their chocolate, including the famous Almond Roca, popular around the world. Almond Roca is sold in 65 countries on six continents. It began being sold in shops in Ginza and other high-end locations around Japan beginning in 1962. But the biggest overseas consumer is China. Almond Roca is considered a luxury chocolate across China, and it is popular to give as a premium gift for China's most important holiday, Chinese New Year. Now I do enjoy Almond Roca, but for me, my favorite Brown and Haley candy is the Peanut Butter Mountain Bar, named after, of course, Mount Rainier. Now these are my favorite chocolates, maybe anywhere, but you're not going to find them around the world. Johnson's is a local family shop that has passed down the recipes from generation to generation since 1925. They are not mass produced. Only their family knows the recipe, and only their family makes the chocolates. And the only place you're going to get them is right here. Johnson's is an old fashioned candy shop, right out of the past. The way they make their chocolate, the attention to detail, and the friendliness of their people. 
I could eat about a million and a half of these. Sheeney Stadium is home to the Tacoma Rainiers, the AAA team of the Seattle Mariners, which is the highest level of minor leagues. I love this hat, with a striking picture of Mount Rainier as part of the logo. Although Cheney Stadium has seen Tacoma be the minor league affiliate of numerous teams including being known as the Tacoma Yankees, the Tacoma Cubs, the Tacoma Tigers, which was the Oakland Athletics affiliate, and their original team, the Tacoma Giants. They have been the Tacoma Rainiers for much longer than any other team, and it seems appropriate with Seattle being just down the road and the view of Mount Rainier, their namesake, visible from left field. And on the wall between sections, some of the Tacoma landmarks, starting with Mount Rainier, the Tacoma Dome, the Glass Museum, Union Station, Bob's Java Jive, Stadium High School, and the Narrows Bridge. Just a few of the great players who have represented Tacoma include Gaylord Perry, Juan Marischal, Willie McCovey, Mark McGuire, Alex Rodriguez, Ken Griffey Jr., and Felix Hernandez. It's also worth stopping into a couple of the small towns on the outskirts of Tacoma as well, such as the picturesque fishing village of Gig Harbor, just across the Narrows Bridge. and Bonnie Lake, with a view of Mount Rainier that's tough to beat. A heck of a view, but hey, if you watch this video all the way through, you don't need to go any further than a mirror for a great view, because you're a superstar, it's true. I hope this was enjoyable for everyone, including you. Saying goodbye from the Proctor Farmer's Market.